Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate you to the next level in your life. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. But the process is nasty. The process is gross. You know, after looking at the video, I was like, uh, at first I was like all grossed out and everything until I saw the hot dog with the mustard. And then I loved it all over again. <laughs> but how many know that sometimes our life looks like that? It looks nasty. And many times we, we want to see the final product. We want to see the weenie and the dog, right? The, the little bun and the mustard and the relish and the ketchup and, and, and the chili beans, whatever you'd like to put on your dog. But check this out. It may look good, right? It may taste good, but no one saw the process in order for it to get on that plate. And the process is nasty. Like right now, some of you, you're at a very good place. And people are just think like, dang, you're just like, you're on it. You're solid. You're great. You're like, no, dude. You, even, you, you know right now, you're just looking at, at the, the after product of, of all kinds of hell, right? There was a process that I had to go through in order for me to get to this place. And so many people love to see the highlights of our life, but no one saw the real <laughs> with all the cray cray that went on in our life to get here. And if you were here on Sunday, I kind of started this, this, this message on process. And, and I want to just kind of piggyback from Sunday's message. How many were here on Sunday? Okay, good. Did you guys enjoy that message? We're going to keep talking a little bit more because you know what? I don't think we're finished. And I want to talk about this because you know what? Right now, many of us, we're in different stages. We're in different seasons in our life right now. Some of us are in a phenomenal season. Man, things are great. Things are going amazing. You know what? Uh, you you're have momentum. You know, you're, you have some amazing opportunities, and things are going great. And others of you, right now, you're in a place where, man, you need a miracle. You need a breakthrough. Man, things are just falling apart. You're just trying to do the best that you can with, let me put this down because I look angry. <laughs> <laughs> throw that at somebody but uh but you may be at a place where you just feel like man I don't know if I'm ever going to come out of this uh, I don't know if I'm ever going to see this victory I, I don't know if I'm going to ever you know come out of this situation I, I don't know if I'm if I'm going to grow if I'm going to advance I don't know if I'm going to have a future you know what right now I'm barely making it I'm barely making it right now financially I don't know how I'm going to pay the next bill I don't know where I'm going to get the next account I don't know where I'm going to you know what I'm saying and then we start thinking about all this stuff and the debt and the pressures and, and the stuff that we all go through can sometimes just make you go nuts. But let me tell you something. Even when you're in the midst of pain and suffering, here's the joy. It's part of your process. Say it with me. Go like this. <sighs> Inhale, exhale. And say, Okay. It's part of the process. Now tell me what that means, right? Because <laughs> some of you are like, what the? Let, 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 me, let me, tonight we're, I'm going to have verses on the screen, and, and then I'm going to work your little fingers. Grab your Bibles. If you guys still own a Bible, grab one. Uh, if you don't have a book Bible, it's okay. You know what you can do is um, you can uh, use the uh, Elevate Church app. We have a Bible um, that you can use there, or you can use your Bible gateway, whatever you like to use on your iPad, iPhone, whatever it is, but open your Bible. And I want you to go quickly to 1 Samuel 120. And I want to preach super short, sweet, and simple tonight, so stay with me. And, uh, and I'm telling you, we're going to have a really good time. Are you guys ready? Yeah. Very cool. So check this out. We all go through process. Everyone here hopefully is believing God for something. Hopefully you're, you're standing, you're believing for whether it's a, a, a paying off your school debt or whether it's a, a growing in the company that you work for or if it's advancing in your family life, uh, seeing your children fulfill everything that, that you know that God's called them to. And so we all have dreams and, and visions and, and inspirations and, and we have things that we want to see happen. But guess what? Sometimes... Um, no, oftentimes, I'm lying, not sometimes, oftentimes, okay, when, when, when there is a promise from God, 
I promise you, <laughs> he promises you, there's going to be a, a, a season of process. It's kind of like I said Sunday, you can't skip. You can't skip a step with God. If you weren't here, watch the live stream. Well, let me, let me just share, share something with you. In 1 Samuel 1, in verse 20, I'm just going to read one simple part of it. Because we know the story. This is Hannah. Hannah could not bear children. Okay, she cannot have kids. And so, you know what? She's, she's upset. She's angry because she has a hater knife saying, ha ha, you can't have kids and I can have all kinds of kids. And she was just being mean and, and just wicked, evil. The lady was just, it, it, you know, it was, it was uh, Hannah's husband's second wife. And uh, that was okay in those times. Um, and, so, and so Hannah is like, upset, she's angry, she's resentful, she's, but, but then she finally comes to a conclusion, she's like, okay, you know what, I can't just sit here and be whining and complaining and crying all day long, she's like, I need to do something, something, listen, when you want something to change, you have to do something, and God is not going to do something for you when he has placed something within reach for you to grab and do something about it. And so she says, you know what, okay, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to fast and I'm going to pray and I'm going to believe. Everybody say believe. believe. Okay, I'm going to believe. She had her little ye yellow Elevate card and she wrote down, I believe I can have children. And, and so she went on, on to believing and, and it was a process of time because she didn't eventually or she didn't immediately get her, her miracle, but she eventually got her miracle. And, and look what, here's, here's what I love about this. And first time, oh, you guys are awesome. Thank you so much. Wow, media. Can we give it up for media? Wow. They're prophetic, very prophetic. I didn't even know what verse it was, and they're like, bam. You guys are awesome. Or did I say it? They probably knew it because I kind of shared with them as well last night. It says this. Everybody say, so it came to pass. Okay, work with me, guys. Work with me. So it came to pass. Look at your neighbor and say, it's going to come to pass. It's going to come to pass. It's going to come to pass. What is it that you're believing God for? Because it is going to come to pass. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Just wait for it. It's going to happen. Do you believe that? It's going to come to pass. Look at her and say, it's going to come to pass. Look at her and say the same thing to her. Yeah, now look, listen, listen. So it says Hannah was waiting all this time for a child. Nothing was happening. But she kept believing, she kept praying, she kept standing, she kept agreeing with God's word, not man's opinion. And it says, and so it came to pass in the what? <laughs> you know how, how that thing you're believing for is going to come to pass? It's going to come and pass in the process. No process, no pass. Let me say it again. No process, no pass. There's a process to everything. A process that we have to accept. I think that many times we don't see the victory, we don't see the, the outcome of whatever it is you're believing for is because we're too busy crying about the situation when we should just accept the fact that, wait a minute, this is probably part of the process for me to get my victory because then I have a story to tell and now I have a testimony and now I got something to shout about. I can't say I have a victory unless I had a struggle. So there has to be a process of time. And so it came to pass in the process. Okay, let's go to another verse. Are you guys with me? <clears throat> Let me drink some tea. Let's read again what we read on Sunday, 2 Kings 13, 14 through 19. It says, now Elisha had been suffering. We've been talking about suffering. You know, life's greatest hits, okay? When you're going through the process, the process includes suffering. The process includes sacrificing. The process includes obedience. The process includes prayer. The process includes faith. Those are all the ingredients in order to see it come to pass. And, and so listen, sometimes we want to skip the process and then we're questioning the outcome. 
stay with me because I'm going to go somewhere. We want to skip the process and then we cry about the outcome. Stay. Now look, so Elisha had been suffering from the illness from which he died. This in a Sunday's message. How can a righteous person die of sickness? It happened. Jehoash, king of Israel, went down to see him, and he wept over him. My father, my father, he cried. The chariots and the horsemen of Israel, we know the story. If you were here on Sunday, it talked about that. Elisha said, get a bow. Everybody say, get a bow. Get a bow. He says, see, Elisha already knew that, that the king was coming with some crying saying you're dying and now, now it's never going to come to pass. You are the guy that always brought me the word. You are the guy that always encouraged me. You are the guy, you are the one. And he, he already knew that he was about to cry. And he says, hey, listen, go grab, a, go grab a bow. Chill. He already knew. He says, grab a bow and some what? Did you guys see my professional bow and arrow I brought on Sunday? It was amazing, huh? Do you guys see me shoot? I think at the 10 o'clock, I shot some of those uh, belief cards. Now, I wasn't being mean. I'm like, bam, bam, it came to pass. It was awesome. But he said, grab a, grab a bow and grab some what? And he what? Okay, what is God asking you to do right now that you have not done? Let's keep going. He says, take the bow in your hands. He said to the king of Israel and when he had taken it Elisha put his hands on the king's hands okay what did God put in your hands thank you Aaron God put something within your reach what did he place in your hand you see right now you may not have enough money because you got too much month but what did he put within reach that you have not used. For example, it's almost time. It's end. I'm just going to end. We okay? We okay on time? Okay. For example, I remember a time when I was in ministry and, and I left. I left a six-digit figure income, okay, to come work minimum wage in ministry. Okay, so check this out. So I'm in ministry now, right? Barely making it, but I'm living out the call. There's a sacrifice, and sometimes there's suffering. It's part of the fruit of the Spirit, long-suffering. What do you mean? What is long-suffering? Sometimes you suffer long. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, now I got that. I'm like, oh, okay, now, now I know why the Spirit is long-suffering. <laughs> you suffer long. It's awesome. Okay, so we were struggling financially because... Um, I think this was after I got the sickness and I, 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 we had the uh, amount of bills. And, and I'm like, oh, my God, I got hit with stuff and, and, and $700,000 uh, 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 later of everything that took place, we were responsible for a, a, a huge percentage which set us back five years of debt. And then you know what? I'm like, how are we going to do this? Okay, so, so check this out. So uh, the man of God said, grab your bow and grab your arrows. In other words, grab Grab what's within your reach. Within his reach was the bow and arrow. We know that he's a king. Kings, and those times they went out to battle. Okay? Okay, so guess what? I, I had a look at my family. I said, hey, guys, I know that I'm in ministry. I know that I'm working full time, but I got to go get a second job. So you know what I did? I started my own cleaning company. Yeah, it's like, okay, how do you start a cleaning company when you're in full-time ministry? I did it, and guess what? I didn't go whining and tell everybody, oh, my God, I have no money. I'm going to be cleaning stuff. I didn't tell nobody at the church. I didn't want anybody to know at the church. Not because I was prideful, but I didn't want anyone to know that I was struggling in the sense of having to pay my bills. Listen, I know who my source is. It's God. But what did I have within me? Well, guess what? Growing up as a little kid, my mom used to clean houses pretty much all of my childhood through my teenage years. And guess what? I was the best vacuumer, bathroom cleaner, and uh, what else? Oh, and furniture cleaner. And that's what I did with her forever. Sometimes I wouldn't go to school because my mom was so tired and exhausted that I said, Mom, I'm going to go. It's like, no, you got to go. I'm like, no, I'm going with you. So I became this professional cleaner. And everybody got freaked out like, man, wow, Antonia, this house is so clean. Guess I would, that was me. <laughs> that was me. 
And you know what she paid me? She paid me with Dr. Pepper and, 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 and uh, the chili cheese Fritos. <laughs> that, that was my payment. But guess what? When I hit that place of struggle, I, I looked at my wife and I said, I got to start a, a business, a side business. So I started cleaning businesses on the side. Now, was that going to be the rest of my life? No, it was something temporary to handle whatever it was that I needed to take care of. And I did it. And guess what? When you're willing to grab whatever is within reach, you know what was within reach? I had a gift in, in not only knowing how to, how to get people to give me their business, but I can clean up a place like nobody's business. I got the skillage that I learned as a kid, and now I brought it into my adult life. And God blessed me with it. And now I was paying bills and so forth. Sometimes we rather whine instead of just say, but what's within my reach? Thank, thank you. Thank you. And so he says, he says, now open the east window. He said, and he opened it. He said, shoot. And so many times, yeah, we go grab the bow and the arrow, but we don't shoot. Should I do it? Should I do it? <laughs> he said, aim and shoot. Aim and shoot. Here we go like this. Go aim. aim. No, come on. You guys are all the weak. Come on. Aim, aim. and shoot. shoot. Yeah, you got to aim. What are you aiming at? What are you aiming for? What are you going for that God has placed within your reach? He said, aim, believe, declare, call those things that be not as though they are. Aim. And, and so he says, aim, and I want you to shoot. And he shot, and the Lord's arrow of what? <laughs> when God says shoot, know that it is an arrow of victory. He says, and the arrow of victory over Aram, and Elisha declare, you will completely destroy the uh, Aramians at Aphek. Then he said, take the arrows. Everybody say arrows. arrows. He didn't say how many arrows. He just said, take the arrows. So, so check this out. I got how many arrows right now? I got six, right? So here, 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 goes, here goes the king. <laughs> he takes the arrows. He says, strike the ground. And he struck the ground how many times? Three. Now, mind you, he told him, dude, <laughs> you got the, the arrow of victory over your Aram. Look, then he said, the man of God. Yeah, then he said, take the arrows. And the king took them. And Elisha told him, strike the ground. And he struck the ground three times. And he did what? Who told him to stop? Let's keep going. And so the man of God was all ticked off and angry and upset and mad and hated the king with him. And he said, you should have struck the ground five or six. Then, dude, you wouldn't have just got the victory. You would have just conquered that thing already. But because you stopped, look what happens. But now you will defeat it only three times. And that's the shocker of how many of us in ministry, in life, we stop when God never said to stop. We, we fall in a tough place and we stop. Who told you to stop praying? Who told you to stop reading? Who told you to stop believing? Who told you to stop? And so as I was thinking about part two of this message from Sunday, I started thinking, okay, you know what? God has given us the arrow of victory, but who told us to stop? And, and no matter how difficult it may be right now for some of you, or this, if you're in a good place right now, well, guess what? I'm preparing you for your next battle. Get ready. 
They're telling them like the Mexican T.D. Jakes, get ready, get ready, get ready, ¿verdad? <laughs> prepárate, prepárate, prepárate. <laughs> Someone give me a hanky. <laughs> Look, Luke 22, 42, listen. It says, now let's take it Jesus style. He says, Father, we know that Jesus is having a difficult time. He's in the, the Garden of Gethsemane, and, and it's filled with olives, olive trees, and, 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 and we know that olives is what produces oil, and we know that the only way to get oil out of an olive is to crush it, and so this is the place of crushing. This is the place of pressure. This is the place of intensity, and it's interesting how Jesus is in this place of pressure in his life, in this, in this garden of olives everywhere, and it prophetically is telling him that, you know what, out of your greatest pressure is going to come the greatest anointing. And so he says, Father, if you're willing, say, if you're willing, take this cup. This cup simply means suffering. Man, if you can just take all this suffering from me. Have you ever felt in life, in ministry, in family, in work, in, in something where you just are suffering so much and you're just like, just take me home. He says, if you can take this cup, this suffering from me, he says, yet not my will, but what? But your sure will be done. And in, your, and in your greatest pain, we have to come to the place where, yes, we can acknowledge to God that I am suffering right now. God, I can complain to God, but don't be such a big complainer to man. Because God can handle your junk, but people can't. Right? People can get offended at you, mad at you, upset at you, disappointed with you. But God's never disappointed with you. God's not mad with you. God's not angry with you. As a matter of fact, God wants to help us. And so he says, okay, you know, God, this is, I'm suffering and I'm hurting. You know, what my experience right now, the things I'm going through with my kids, my, my work, my business, my family, it hurts. But he says, but you know what, but not what I, because if it was up to me, God, I just quit right now. I just give up. And, and, but he says, but you know what? Enough with what I want, okay? Because there's a difference between I want to believe God and I will to believe him. Many of us want to do things, but we don't will it. And so he prays, Father, not my will, but your will be done in my life. And we know that at the end of the story, Jesus goes ahead and he just, he does the will of the Father. We know he goes to you know, Calvary, we got the cross, the power of the cross. He's, he's you know, beat like crazy. He's deformed. His, his blood is shed to, for our sins. He's bruised for our iniquities. And, and the chastisement of, of our peace was upon him. And we know that by his stripes, we have been healed. So all his suffering was for a greater purpose. We just didn't understand it. And to this, to this day, sometimes you suffer and you don't realize that. And I don't realize that too because there's times where I'm suffering. But let, guess what? The story was never meant for me. It's for someone else's benefit. I just can't see it right now. So if you're suffering, here's the joy that guess what? At the end of this, man, you're not only going to enjoy the outcome of God's arrow of victory, but others are going to benefit from it as well. And that's going to be an awesome thing. Can we give God a big hand clap? Seriously, right? Okay, real quick. Um, I want to talk to you about this because you know what? If Jesus could have stopped not realizing that there were more arrows, where have we stopped? Right now, because you have to ask yourself the question, you know, where am I right now? Because if you're just at that place of just stuck, you have to find out where. And so, and so what I did is I, I created this whole thing called um, my map with God. So let me just kind of give you my history here. Okay, so in 1993... I was a atheist. Then my daughter was born in this year, Alexis Ruiz. Huh? And that's why I'm always horrible with years. (laughs) (laughs) 
I always mess this up. I hope I got the rest right. Okay, 1994. Let's just not, let's not correct me no more. Okay, so Atheist 94, right? And then 94, all hell broke loose. My daughter was born with a blood disease called Group B strep. She was given 48 hours to live. Long story short, you've all, many of you have already heard of that, make, that come to elevate. But God did a, a miracle. M-I-R-A, I know how to spell. And he did a miracle. You know, you know how he did a miracle? Uh, basically, I said, well, God, God was willing to start me with mustard seed faith. And I said, I said this. I said, okay, if God, if you're real, then you heal my daughter and I'll believe you. That was a challenge, right? Because now it's like, okay, God, I'm willing to believe. Do it and I'll serve you. Okay, well, I'd love to say to you that I served him in 94, but I didn't. God did the miracle. But guess what? I, I kept breaking down, <laughs> falling apart, where I finally said, I need the God who gave me that miracle. I need help. And, and my family was falling apart. Marriage was falling apart. Everything was falling apart. And, and in 96 of December, I came to know Christ. It was awesome. I came to know Jesus. And then here, as I came to know Jesus, I, I, I read his word. I prayed. You know what? I served. I got involved in church. And I just became a church man. December of 1996, and as I kept doing these things, and then in, in 1999, okay, guess what? Isaac was in mom's belly. But then the doctor said this. They said, you know what? We, they sat around a the table. They said, we encourage you to abort this child. Your child has no legs, no limbs, no, nothing. This is not good. It, you're not. You're. You're going to give birth to a child that that you're going to bring pain to and every negative thing. And and I'm telling you, I sat there with all these doctors in this room and I said, you know what? In Jesus' name, by the stripes of my Lord and Savior Jesus, He's going to be whole and healed. And they laughed. And I walked out of there. My wife was crying. She's freaking out. I told her, no. I'm like, no, God promised us a son because I remember it was prophesied to us that the next child would be a boy. We didn't know he was a boy yet. We just know he, we were pregnant. And so guess what? No, here, here we have miracle, miracle, right? And then, and then Christ and yay, we're on a high, praise God. Everything's going amazing. Life is changing. Family's healed. Everything's amazing. And then bam, suffering. Suffering, pain, boom, made a decision. Well, guess what? We decided, we said, you know what? No matter how he comes out, we're going to have this boy. It doesn't matter. But we believe that our, our son is, well, guess what? He was born, but he was born with complications. His, he was bleeding profusely from his brain. The doctors were like, look, here's a normal brain. Here's your son's brain. And, and I just kept saying, no, I, I'm believing for healing in Jesus' name. And so we went through this whole process. But guess what? By this time, we had enough maturity in the word and prayer and trusting and believing God's plan that we said, no, we're going to continue to fight the good fight of faith. And we're going to see this come to pass. But there's going to be a process. And so we fasted, we prayed, we stood, we believed. And guess what? We got our miracle through process. Even after we got our miracle, after they said, I mean, he had legs, arms. I mean, everything was gorgeous, good-looking boy. Everything was amazing, looking just like his dad, amazing. And, and so guess what? So, so now we wish that everything was awesome, but it wasn't. You know why? Because for another year, we had doctors coming uh, uh, to our house, and we also had to go to doctor's offices because they had to give him speech therapy. Uh, 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 what's the other thing called? Physical. No, there's another word for it. Uh, okay, come on. More. Anybody else want to try? Yeah, there's another name for it. But anyways, but yeah, he had physical therapy. Uh, um, they call it something. Mo mobility. Okay, mobility therapy. And so he had issues with holding stuff, doing stuff. But guess what? We kept trusting. We kept believing. It was a process. It didn't happen overnight. But now, man, my boy, he's played football. He's been, you know, first string running back. You know, he's out there now doing speeches. He's got Bible club. This is the same boy the doctor said, abort. 
Do you hear what I'm saying? So there's a process to stuff. And then look, and so that was 1999. Right, And then after 1999, you know, we went through that little time. But then in 2000, where's the 2000? 2000, guess what? Full-time ministry. Hey, praise Jesus for full-time ministry. Isn't that amazing? Part-time. It was part-time and it was minimum wage. <laughs> it was so amazing. What a great package. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, wow, thank you. I'll take that. I'll leave six figures for minimum wage. Amazing. And, and so it's like, okay, <laughs> praise God. A little suffering. Okay, we're going to have to cut off all the fat. Okay. Huh? Frijoles and arroz again. It's all good. But guess what? But there was joy when you're living the call. It's no longer about the money. It's about your purpose, living your purpose. Now, that's not for everybody. I'm not here to say quit your jobs and go in ministry because not everybody's called to ministry. Some of you, please don't come in ministry. <laughs> You'll jack it up. Please don't. Yeah? And some of us that aren't in ministry need to get out of ministry. Right? It's true. It works both ways. You know, some of us, we're just better in the, in the workforce. Man, you're, you're anointed to go out and bring the provision for God's vision. Right? Or you're anointed to win souls at the workplace. Okay, whatever. So 2000, right? And then 2004, I wrote these down. So 2004, guess what? Bam! Cancer. Why am I showing you this? I'm showing you this because guess what? When you have stopped, you need to get a map of your life and find out where did you stop. Because some of you got stuck at a certain year and you have not moved forward anymore. It could have been a divorce for some of you here. It could have been, you know what, uh, uh, which one of the years here in 2013 for us, my niece was killed. She was killed. That was a hit for me. You know why? Because minutes before she breathed her last breath, I hit my niece and I called heaven down to earth and she still died. Why? But in the process of time, now my sister has ministered to more than a dozen parents who have had their children pass on on a young age, and she has brought healing to every single family that she's met. Why my niece had to be killed, I don't know. I don't even have time to even question it and why, why. It's confusing. We live in a broken world. Stuff happens. But in the process of time, guess what? My niece is saving families. And she's in heaven. And I'll see her again. Okay? So, bam, cancer. Now we go this. And then I, I lose a whole year. And then we keep going. But then guess what? In, in 2015, guess what happens? Elevate church. No, 2010. Elevate church opened up. Right? Amazing. People getting saved. People being changed, transformed, touched. People coming. Felicia's, Anthony's, Jessica's, Candy's. I mean, just bam, look around you. And so no matter how many things go like this in life, it's all a part of the process because today I can preach and tell you a story of a God who has been faithful when I've been on my highs and who has been faithful when I've been in my lows and who has been faithful when I felt like nothing was ever going to come out of this. God is faithful. But here's what he says to you. Pick up your bow and you grab your arrows and you aim and you shoot, and you aim, and you shoot, and you don't stop. He never said stop. Two-thirds of God's name is go. You never stop. But you got to find out, did you stop somewhere? Did you stop somewhere? Where did you stop? Maybe at one point in life with God. Now, mind you, I called it my map with God. Now, I can do my map of life, but my that's pretty jacked up. I mean, it's pretty. It goes way back. We would have been talking about all kinds of nasty things. But guess what? But I talk about my map with God because once I came to my God, things started changing. You have to ask yourself, at what point in your life were you passionate about God that you're no longer passionate about? At what point in your life, do you remember when you were probably that intercessor that you always prayed about everything? Now you hardly pray about anything. 
Do you remember that time where you would memorize scripture and when something would come, you would quote a scripture? Now, man, we quote the internet and define what our issue is. Right? You know what? We no longer have scriptures. We have internet. Come on, I don't have a verse that I'm standing on right now, but I got me Netflix right now. I don't have a story in the Bible that I've memorized that brought hope, but I can tell you this much, but I got me a YouTube channel. Pick up your arrow. And I'm going to end with this. For sake of time, Jesus is, is working hard, doing life. And, and we know of John the Baptist, his, his cousin, is preaching the gospel. He was preparing the way for the Savior and and, and think, please listen, nobody leave, nobody, just don't, don't move. But John the Baptist is preaching a message. He's, he's serving God. He's passionate about God. He doesn't have an easy life. He was a little weird, man. John the Baptist was weird. He was dressed with like furry stuff and looking like a caveman eating locust and cricket, honey and dipping crickets. and just, just a weird guy, you know what I'm saying? But he loved God. And, and guess what? And so... His cousin, his cousin, his family, okay, he gets captured by, 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 you know, King Crazy. And, and we know what happens to John the Baptist. He's beheaded, right? And, and, and so the word comes to Jesus. As a matter of fact, you guys, did I give you that, that verse by any chance? Did I give you that one? Let me see if I gave it to you guys. I hope I gave it to you guys. I didn't give it to you guys. It sucks. Let me just read it to you. Matthew 14, verse 13. Look, look what happens quickly, and, and we're done. It says, then Jesus heard what had happened to John, and, and he wanted, everybody say he wanted. He wanted to be alone. You know what that meant? That he was suffering. He said, I just leave me alone. I, 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 I don't, I, not right now. Mind you, everyone was following him, and he says, no, not right now. Just No. Just leave me alone. He wanted to be alone. And, and it says, so he went into a boat to a quiet place. So he wanted to be quiet. Just, I don't want to deal with anybody right now. My cousin is dead. I'm hurting. I'm suffering. I'm always giving life away. Ah, just give me a moment. Just, ugh. Have you ever felt that way? Oh, I have. Trust me. Just, just, ah, uh, just let me get alone for a minute, man. I can't, I can't right now encourage someone right now. I can't. I need encouraging. Okay, just so you get the picture. And so it says, and the crowds heard about this. So they followed him on foot. Stand up, Felicia. Quick, quick, stand up. Put your stuff down. Quick, quick. You're Jesus. Play Jesus. Go, 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 go. Slowly, slowly. And then everyone's coming. Follow me too. Follow me too. Turn back, Jesus. Turn back. No, turn back. Look at me and they keep walking. Come back. Just... <laughs> Follow. Keep going. Go, go the other way. Go the other way. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Follow. Come on. Follow. 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 Follow us, girl. Put your jacket on later. Come on. Follow us. Be following Jesus. And then you turn back again. Jesus just keeps turning back. Hey, come on. Follow. Follow. Come on. Come on. Follow. Come on. Come on. Follow. Follow. Stop. Jesus stops, turns around, and he's touched. And he's touched. Look, look behind. It's just like everyone just wants, just we love you, Jesus. And Jesus is looking just like her, like. But he's hurting. He's hurting. He's suffering. His cousin just got beheaded. He's he's hurting. He wanted to be alone. 
He, he withdrew himself. He wanted to get away from everybody. Everybody, please be seated. Just grab any seat. It's okay. Just grab any seat. And then look, it says, and then when Jesus came, as says ashore, he saw a large crowd. He saw a large crowd. So touching. He felt deep concern for them. He healed their sick people. When it was almost evening, then the disciples came to him. There's nothing here, they said. It's already getting late. He said, send the crowds away. They can go and buy some food in the villages. And Jesus replied, no, they don't need to go away. You give them something to eat. He says, but we only have five loaves and, and, and we only have two, two fish. And, and they answered, he answered, bring them here to me. He said, what do you have? All they said is, we don't have, we don't have, we don't have. He says, but what do you have? And they said, well, all we have is, 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 is five loaves and two fish. This is what we have. He says, then bring them to me. And they brought it to him, and he took it before the Father, and it says that he blessed it, and then he fed not only 5,000 men, that didn't include women and children, which ended up being on that day over 14,000 men, women, and children. So what am I saying? That in your greatest suffering, that God can create the greatest miracle. The greatest miracle. But what do you have? I have nothing right now. I'm just in pain. But what do you have? I'm just going through it right now. You don't know. I just can't even pay the bills. Like, But what do you have? Because God can take that suffering and he can feed multitudes with it. Stand to your feet. Let's go. If today's message impacted you in any way and you would like to help us spread the gospel to others by giving a financial gift, please text the number below and we know that someone's life will be changed as yours was today.